Spotify says it's paying artists a plenty. Facebook Messenger officially expands to games, and Microsoft hopes you'll buy its $20,000 Surface Hub. It's Wednesday, June 10th, and this is Crunch Report. Hello, everybody. All right, so the same week that Apple announced its wannabe Spotify killer, jury's still out on whether Apple Music is really going to make its mark in the streaming music space. Jury's out, doesn't launch till June 30th. Spotify would like a little attention of its own this week. The company has announced that it now has 20 million paying users and 75 million users overall. Those are good numbers. Spotify claims it's paid out $3 billion to artists from streams on its platform overall, with 300 million in the first three months of 2015 alone. Spotify isn't commenting on rumors that it's also just raised $526 million from a bunch of investors at an $8.53 billion valuation, but releasing those royalty numbers may have something to do with attorneys general in both New York and Connecticut already investigating whether Apple may have violated antitrust laws and colluded with music labels on streaming prices. Streaming wars are just heating up, people. Facebook Messenger has officially expanded to include games since the platform launched in April, with Doodle Draw Game now appearing in Messenger's app list. Facebook used to only allow content creation apps like GIF or sound effects makers in Messenger. So you might say, what's Doodle Draw? Well, if you remember Draw Something, it is a complete clone of that. Draw Something was really, really popular back in 2012, and then got acquired by Zynga for over $200 million. And then everyone got tired of it and moved on to other games, and Zynga looked stupid. TechCrunch's Josh Constein notes that games that rely on private messaging and chat could be a big win for Messenger. People are playing games, they're talking to each other, there's a lot of user engagement. But then there's also the potential issue of Messenger spam, too. Ugh. For example, you earn in-game currency for getting other people to play Doodle Draw with you, which has polluted the Facebook feed in the past. Remember all those Candy Crush invites? No. Messenger now has 600 million users and yesterday announced over 1 billion downloads on Android alone. So you'd assume it's not looking to overly annoy any of us anytime soon. HR startup Zenefits and corporate payroll service ADP. ADP has been around since 1949. Well, the two of them are not seeing eye to eye, and it's not just because of old school and new school companies. Here's the situation. On June 4th, ADP cut off Zenefits small business clients that were using ADP's payroll system from sharing data with Zenefits. Now, ADP says this was in response to Zenefits, quote, pulling sensitive information, including unmasked social security numbers and employee banking information in a manner that did not comply with ADP's standards for data security. Zenefits says this came out of nowhere. This isn't fair. Now, the way it works is Zenefits does use ADP, along with a lot of other companies, as a payroll processing service for their small and medium-sized business clients. Zenefits doesn't do that itself. But ADP claims the two companies have never really officially been integrated, and that Zenefits never had ADP's permission to take some of the data that they were taking. Zenefits founder Parker Conrad says, this is actually about ADP feeling threatened by Zenefits, who provides HR services that compete with ADPs. Today, the plot thickens. ADP has filed suit in federal court against Zenefits and against Parker Conrad personally for defamation in response to a blog post that Zenefits posted yesterday stating it thought ADP had cut off access because ADP was developing a product to compete with Zenefits. Who thought HR could be so drama-filled? Microsoft has announced that it'll start accepting pre-orders of its really big 84-inch Surface Hub device on July 1st in 24 markets. You might say, that sounds great. How much is it going to cost? Oh, just $19,999. If you've got the cash, and you actually very well might since the Surface Hub is aimed at businesses, the units will start shipping this September. The company is also offering a smaller 55-inch option for $6,999, if $7,000 makes more sense to you. The Surface Hub's big feature is its huge touchscreen, really big. It's built on technology from Perceptive Pixel, which it acquired back in 2012. The Hub has a computer built in, so it's sort of an all-in-one thing. 
and it's designed for conference rooms mostly, handling video calls, note taking, collaboration with your peers, a variety of apps as well can run on the device. Now obviously the price tag is way too rich for a lot of the smaller companies. But even if you just focus on the larger enterprise market, TechCrunch's Alex Wilhelm points out that if Microsoft can sell 50,000 units of the larger edition, that's a billion dollars in revenue. Might be a good idea after all. Twitter continues to roll out tools that help its users fight abuse on its network. Today, the company introduced a new feature that allows you and me to share block lists with one another. So individual users can already mute or block accounts that are trolling or seem like spam or abusive or just crappy online behavior, people you don't want to hear from. But by letting users share their own block lists with their friends and their followers, problem accounts can be mass blocked a lot more easily. To take advantage of this, you just access your blocked account settings at twitter.com while you're logged in, and the advanced options drop down menu will let you either export your list or import a list, whether you're sharing or, or pulling it in someone else's data. Twitter really started updating its abuse reporting mechanisms last year, taking the whole thing pretty seriously. And in December, the company rolled out new tools that allowed users to specifically detail what kind of abuse they were experiencing and stopped allowing an account that you might have blocked from viewing your profile altogether. In March, the company introduced features that made it easier to report threats to the police, and then in April, updated its policies on violence and threats, which also gave the company the right to lock abusive counts for periods of time. And that's the report for today. I'm Sarah Lane. Crunch Report airs Monday through Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, right here on TechCrunch.com. We'll see you tomorrow.